Hey bitches so I decided to take a break from making abused Akashi content as I needed a moment to finalize my ideas and come up with the perfect ending. Anyway I have decided to make an away a story because Oikawa is literally my favorite character and he needs love. So this video will definitely be a long one because it only has one part call it a mini movie or something because it will definitely be the longest video I have made to date. I stand non-toxic away a relationships so this will be more of a fluff than an angst. I feel like the intro is getting too long so bye guys I hope you enjoy. Hi so this is gonna be like a one shot type of shit and I have a feeling it's going to be pretty long so I'm willing to have fights with my editor so I can get this mini movie out. This story will contain some mature language and other mentions of sex, it is not ideal to be watched by an audience younger than 16 but I can't really control that plus I'm 15 myself so OOP. This is my first story about Oikawa and Iwezumi so I'm sorry if it isn't any good. I just wanted a bream from the abused Akashi series as I don't want that to be the only story currently up on my channel, I want to spice things up you know? Anyway let's get on to the story. It was a typical rainy Saturday when Oikawa emerged from under his covers to cautiously check his phone for any notifications off his IWA Chan, his best friend. To his surprise, there wasn't any which hurt Oikawa because his best friend always messaged him when he got home, but yet there was no message. Stupid IWA not letting me know that he's okay. Oikawa was left there contemplating his emotions deciding what he should do. Sai what should I do now? I always wait to hear from IWA Chan first. The feelings began to become overwhelming and Oikawa needed to cool off before he triggers another panic attack so he decided to go to the gym to practice his serves. Oikawa may put up the front that he is a self-centered asshole but in reality, that's just a cover-up so he won't be judged for being himself. Oikawa is a gentle soul with separation issues with a bad case of anxiety and has frequent panic attacks, which all are caused by the stress volleyball causes him. He is also a perfectionist so he beats himself up if his volleyball skins aren't his best. Oikawa's panic attacks have became more frequent after he lost the chance to go to nationals, this had a huge toll on him and it has affected his self-confidence and deteriorated his own image of himself, leaving him in the position to wonder if he is ever going to be good enough. However, luckily for him, Iwezumi has always been there for him no matter what he is going through and has always managed to calm him down and make Oikawa think that he actually has a purpose. He owes a lot to Iwe for being the reason he smiles. Let's get some practice in. I need to make sure my serves are perfect or I will let my team down again. Oikawa let out his frustrations with himself by continuously pushing himself to his limit even if it resulted in him hurting his bad knee again. He didn't care about the pain, he just wanted IWA Chan to be proud of him. Iwezumi's POV. Geez, that shit took way too long. I better go see Tora to make sure he's okay, I'd hate for him to have a panic attack without me being there. Iwezumi reached for his phone only to be reminded that he had a project due tomorrow as a piece of paper fell from underneath it, a project in which he hadn't even started. Shit. Sorry Toru I guess I'll have to check up on you later I'll message Maki to go and check on you in the meantime. Private messages between Iwezumi and Hanamaki. Maki. Hanamaki is online. Oh oh oh, the great IWA Chan messaged me first. Shut up, I told you not to call me that, only Toru can. Yeah yeah. Only lover boy can call you that I get it. Anyway what's up? Has it got something to do with Kawa babe? First, don't call him that. Second, it is, actually. I smell jealousy Maki eyeing up Iwezumi. Ugh. Are you gonna help me or what? Such a dry text IWA, I'm hurt. But yes, if it's for Kawa babes I'll help. Thanks. 
I need you to go check on him because I'm currently busy with a project and I won't be able to see him to make sure he's okay. No worries, me and Matson are near the area anyway, if he's not at his house he'll check the gym, keep you updated on him. Alright thanks. No problem Romeo, I'll make sure your princess is okay. Hanamaki is offline. PFT. That dick. At least he will make sure Toru is okay. He then began to work his ass off to finish it in time for tomorrow. Dot. 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 Back to Oikawa. He had been practicing for about ten minutes and could already feel the pain pulsating through his knee, when he looked down he could already see how swollen it had become in a small amount of time and saw the bruising that had began to show. Fuck. I can't let this stop me. Need to get stronger so I can become a better player, someone who Hajime can be proud of. With that being said, he continued to practice until his knee finally gave up after he jumped up to do a jump serve but only landing in a dodgy position which lead to a huge crack sound which was then followed up with loud screams of pain. Ugh, why the fuck did this have to happen? Why now? Oikawa tried to get himself up but no matter what he did he couldn't manage to fight through the pain. If only IWHN was here. Matson and Mackie's POV. Hey, can you hear that? Hear what? You dumb bitch, the screams obviously. Oh, right. I thought they was just in my head Mackie being an ironic bitch. Bro you okay? No bro. Wanna hold my hand? No homo though. Yeah no homo. With that being said, they both grabbed each other's hand and began to run to the gym to investigate the suspicious screams they had been hearing. Do you think someone is dying? I mean I hope, it would be Sparkles Entertainment Sparkles. PFFFTT They both enter the gym and see a screaming Oikawa on the gym floor with blood dripping down his leg. Oh shit. They both ran over to him. Captain. Mackie. Matson. What are you guys doing here? The real question is, what are you doing here? Dot dot dot. Can you two stop bickering? Kawabebe you're hurt for fuck's sake. We might need to take you to hospital. No. Kawa, we can't. Eve you like this. And I can't be taken to a fucking hospital either. You know how much I hate them. Then you shouldn't be practicing on a fucking bad knee. Dot dot dot. I know where to take him. Oh yeah, that would work perfectly. What are you guys going on about? Hush princess, you will be taken to your prince charming soon. Dot. 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 Private messages between Hanamaki and Iwezumi. Yo. What's up? Is he okay? Open your door. What? Open your door, your princess needs you. Is he okay? Dot. 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 Iwezumi ran down the stairs and unlocked his door as quickly as he could to be greeted with an injured Oikawa. Kawa. Oikawa had fallen down in Iwa Chan's doorway, which made his heart skip a beat. We will leave you guys to it. Yeah. Thank you. Don't mention it. Iwa, it hurts. Of course, it hurts you, dimwit. Why was you practicing so late? You could have seriously hurt yourself. Tears began to stream down Oikawa's face. He was indeed not a pretty crier. Oh come here you big baby. IWA opened his arms signaling for Oikawa to come and hug him. Oikawa loved this side of him, seeing Iwezumi was only for his eyes and he intended to keep it that way. Iwezumi has been like this since they were kids, he acted all tough but really, whenever him and Oikawa was alone we would always show his compassionate side and caring side the sides that only appeared when he was alone with Toru. Toru. Yes Hajime. 
Please stop overworking yourself you keep getting injured and I can't stand to see you upset. It pains me. You care? Of course I care. You're my best friend for fuck's sake. What if it was serious and stopped you from playing volleyball? You're my best friend that's all I'll ever be. I'm sorry Hajime I was stressed. I know. I know. And I'm sorry for not checking up on you, I know you get anxious when you're alone. I just had this really big project to do which was due tomorrow and I just didn't have the time. It's okay I w h n. I get to see you now. I know that you aren't always going to be there so it's okay, I don't expect you to put your life on hold just because of me. It isn't fair. I'd do anything for you Toru. Oikawa felt his heart speed up as Iwazumi said that. I'd do anything fr you too, Hajime Oikawa is showing love. Now, let me treat your knee, I bet it's still hurting. It's not that bad I'm just happy that I'm here with you. Why does he have to be so damn cute? I'll go get some supplies for your knee, in the meantime take some of my clothes and take a bath, it should help with the swelling. Iwazumi shortly left the room and Oikawa hobbled over to Iwa's closet and took out his oversized Godzilla hoodie and a black top with some shorts. He then proceeded to the bathroom and began to strip and prepare his bath. Once the bath was done he got in cautiously to prevent him knocking his knee and causing more pain. Iwa was right this is so soothing. I wish I could be honest with him I hate keeping things from him. Oikawa didn't know but Iwazumi had came back up the stairs and could hear every word that he was saying. He isn't telling me something? He then shouted into the bathroom telling Oikawa to hurry up. Oi! Kawa! Hurry up I got the supplies. Okay. Should hope he didn't hear me. Oikawa quickly got dressed in the clothes he stole from Iwazumi and walked out to see a very flustered Iwa Chan. Hajime? What's wrong? And nothing. Oikawa walked out in Iwazumi's hoodie which was way too big on him, to Iwazumi, it looked like that was all that he was wearing and this made his already red face go even redder. Is Iwachan flu's tread? S shut up. And come here. Oikawa walked over and sat on the side of Iwazumi's bed while Iwazumi cared for his knee. He applied some ointment which made Oikawa yelp for a moment but after that he applied a bandage to make sure that it stayed warm. Does it feel better now? Yeah, then you IWA Chan. Hey, how about you stay here tonight? I want to keep an eye on you and your knee. I don't trust you to be on your own as you will be tempted to practice again. IWA it's okay, I'll be fine on my own. Nope I've decided you're staying here, plus aren't your parents gone for the week? Yeah they are, aren't yours gone too? Yup, so how about you stay with me for a while, we won't be lonely that way. I like that. Sure I w h n. Good, now let's watch a movie. Ah uh -huh. Can we watch something with aliens in? Of course. Yay. Iwajimo knew that anything to do with aliens was Oikawa's favorite thing to watch, so prior to this he went out and bought a lot of new alien films just for when Oikawa stayed over. So, which one do you want to watch? That one. Iwazumi found it cute that whenever Oikawa watched a film he was always so excited like he was a little kid. Oikawa ended up snuggling into Iwazumi as he felt safe with him. Plus they were always touchy in their friendship so this seemed normal to them. Cute. Did you say something IWA? Oh no don't worry. They watched a random alien documentary until when Iwazumi noticed that Oikawa had fallen asleep on his chest, he couldn't help but blush. How can someone be this cute? Iwazumi then laid down next to Oikawa wrapping his arm around him in a comforting and warm embrace. Good night Toru. They both fell asleep comfortably. The next morning. 
Oikawa was the first person to wake up. When he tried to move he felt something heavy pulling him down. Hmm? He looked down and saw Iwazumi with his arm around him sleeping peacefully. How adorable! Oikawa was getting up to get a drink so he gently lifted up Iwazumi's arm so he could move without waking him up. Before he left he said something to Iwazumi. I love you, Hajime. Oikawa then got up and got a drink without noticing that Iwazumi had been awake the whole time. Did he just say he loved me? Iwazumi then got up and waited for Oikawa to return upstairs because he had gotten cold and he wanted his best friend back. Oikawa shortly returned and was surprised to see Iwazumi sat up. You're up early. I could say the same to you. I didn't wake you up right? No no, I just got cold that's all. You got cold hey? Yeah now would you kindly come back? I want my warmth back. You big baby. Oikawa then jumped onto Iwa's bed and snuggled up with him. This resulted in a comfortable and soothing silence between the two which was broken when Oikawa's phone began to blow up. In the Pretty Setters Squad group chat. At Oikawa. At Oikawa. At Oikawa. At Oikawa. Oikawa is online. Hey bitches. Kawa babe. Tsumiya babe. Kawa. Kenkan. Pretty bitch. Sexy bitch. Kawa aa, wanna go out today? Hmm. I don't know, I'm currently with IWA Chan. Kenma, Akashi, Sugawara, and Atsumu all eyeing up Oikawa. Wah. He can come too. Sugawara, Kenma, and Akashi all getting an idea. Okay okay where are you guys going first? We are going to the theme park and then we are going to the cinemas after. It sounds fun but... But? I don't want to leave IWHN it's just one of those days. Don't worry boo, he can come too, we know you need him around UX. Yes, the more I for merrier to be honest. Plus Iwazumi san isn't bad. Oh wow, you guys must have really taken a shine to him, especially you Kenma, you never say that anyone is a good person, not even your own boyfriend. Apart from Shoyo Star. Plus we gotta make sure he's good enough for our pretty boy. Alrighty, I'll come. Woo. Meet us at 4 Love XX. Bye bitches. By Kawa babe. Back to Iwazumi and Oikawa. Hey, Hajime. Yeah, Toru. I was wondering, would you like to go out with me later on? I was going on a meet up with Suga, Akashi, Sumu, and Kenma. I just thought that maybe you would like to tag along. Asterisk oh my god is he asking me out fuck yes wait other people are going, dash, star. Where are you guys supposed to be going? To the theme park and then to the movies after. Sounds fun, sure I'll tag along. Yay. Stop being cute, now when do we have to be ready for? We have to be ready for 4 p.m. Alrighty, do you wanna wear some of my clothes or do you wanna nip home and get some? Can I wear yours? Sure, just pick what you want. Oikawa then jumped and hugged IWA. Thank you IWA Chan. It was now 3.30 p.m. and Oikawa and Iwazumi had set off to meet the others at the theme park. When they arrived, they saw a group of people waiting for them at the entrance. Kawa. Tsumu. The two boys ran up to each other and shared a long-lasting hug. Ahem. PFT. Don't tell me you're jealous o me. No. Awe you was. So you're the famous Omi Omi then? Let me tell you something, you end up breaking Itsuma's heart and I will end up hunting you down and I will gladly break your dick into a million pieces and then set you on fire, okay? So treat him right. Anyway I'm Oikawa Toritsuma's best friend nice to meet you. 
Oikawa goes into his pocket and brings out a bottle of hand sanitizer and pours a little bit on his hand before asking Sakusa for a handshake. You're okay with me being germaphobe? Of course I am, Astumu has told me a lot about you, you seem like a nice guy, I just wanted to get the point across that he is my best friend and I would do anything for him. To his surprise Sakusa shook his hand leaving Itsumu kissing his boyfriend all over to show that he was proud of him. Ehem ok lovebirds, we have some rides to go on. Tsumu sure will later. Omi oh omi oh no. My poor ears. Same here. They all went on some rides and ended up having a great time it was now time for the ferris wheel and to make things better, I was also the beginning of sunset. Come on IWA come on with me. All right all right. Oikawa and Iwazumi went on the ferris wheel and couldn't help but admire the beauty of the sky. The sun against the horizon was truly a sight to be seen. Look at this view Iwazumi. Isn't it beautiful? Not as beautiful as you, Toru. W what? Asterisk shit, did I say that out loud? Fuck I might as well just repeat it asterisk. I said it's not as beautiful as you, Toru. Hajime do you really mean it? Of course I do, you're stunning, nothing could compare to you when it comes to beauty. Thank you Hajime, thank you so much. Oikawa turned away to hide his blush but was then greeted by a hand caressing his face. Don't look away from me. I wasn't finished looking at your gorgeous face yet. Their eyes locked onto each other's, a gaze that was not intended to let go. Iwazumi began to move closer and closer closing the gap between his and Oikawa's lips. Oikawa began to do the same thing until their faces were only centimeters apart and Oikawa could feel Iwazumi's breath brush against his skin. Has anyone ever told you that before, Toru? Blushing and no. They haven't. Well. Everyone else is stupid then. They both leaned in even further to close the gap between them completely. Until they was interrupted when the ride had came to an end and they both jumped back in shock. A little after they heard Itsumu shouting Oikawa's name. Kawa. Come here. What's up Tsumtsum? Me and Omi are gonna go and get ice cream, you want some? Do you want some Hajime? No no I'm good, but you go get some. Are you sure? Yes eyes. Alrighty I'll see you in a bit. Bye Toru. Atsumu, Sakusa and Oikawa all walked away to get ice cream. So, how long have you guys been dating? I what? Me and Kawa? We aren't dating. That almost kiss on the ferris wheel could have fooled anyone. Wait you saw that? Yep, and with my mama's senses, I get the impression that you like him. Dot dot dot. Come on now don't be shy. Fine. When are you gonna confess to him? See confess. My god you're gonna have to tell him at some point. No way plus I don't even know if he likes boys. Dumb. Dumb as hell. Sugawara being over this shit. Tell him or we will. Kenma and Akashi agreeing with Suga. I. Tell who what? Iwazumi shot around I terror wondering if Oikawa had heard everything. And nothing. Iwachan you tell me everything, so why not tell me this? It's not that simple Toru, you will know eventually just not right now. HMPF Oikawa was now moody which made Iwazumi flustered. He's sexy when he's moody. Hey how about we go to the cinemas now? I'm dying to see the new alien film. Alien film? Oh yes, I've heard it's amazing. Yup, Bokuto hasn't shut up about it. IWA Yes Kawa we can go see it. Oikawa falling in love with Iwazumi again. Sugawara, Kenma, Akashi, Atsumu and Sakusa all forming a plan. 
they all headed over to the cinemas and bought their tickets for the film. Luckily enough Iwazumi and Oikawa seats were right next to each other, Kenma totally didn't pay the ticket person to give them tickets which had seats sitting next to each other. They all sat down and enjoyed the movie, while Suga, Kenma, and Akashi kept peeping at Iwazumi and Oikawa to make sure that everything was going to plan. They saw the cutest thing when they saw Oikawa lead on Iwazumi's shoulder fast asleep while Iwazumi had his arm around him. That's adorable. It really is. Dot. 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 The film had now finished and everyone was walking out when Iwazumi noticed that Oikawa was still fast asleep. Damn it I can't move because it would wake him up when's the next film showing? He picked up the cinema schedule and noticed that the next film wasn't due for another three hours. Okay that should be enough time. Iwazumi bent down and kissed Oikawa on the forehead and patient waited for him to wake up. Two hours had passed and Oikawa was starting to wake up, he opened his eyes and peered above at Iwazumi who was sat there peacefully. I-W-H-N. Ah, Tor you're awake. Sorry I didn't wake you up earlier you just looked so peaceful and I couldn't bring myself to do it. I it's okay Iwazumi W where are T the others? Oikawa began to tremble, his breathing speeding up and he couldn't talk right. Hajime knew exactly what was happening. He was having a panic attack. Oikawa's eyes widened in disbelief as he pleaded Iwazumi asking where the others had gone. Iiwa where a are they? Hey shhh please try to calm down Kawa I'm here. T they? They left a while ago Kawa. I promise you they are perfectly fine. BB but. Breathe with me okay? And no. Please Tora for me. Oikawa nodded noting that he would listen to Iwazumi. Okay inhale. One. Two. Three. Four. Exhale. One. Two. Three. Four. Inhale. One, two, three, four. Exhale. One, two, three, four. Oikawa tried his best to follow Iwa's breathing patterns but he just couldn't. His breathing intensified. H H Hajime H help. Asterisk what should I do? I've tried everything that usually calms him down asterisk. Twenty minutes had passed there was still no luck. In the end, Iwazumi resorted to one last thing. A kiss. Fuck it. I-I-W-A. Oikawa was suddenly cut off when a pair of lips pressed against his, he couldn't help but feel comfortable. Oikawa melted into the kiss and embraced the warmth and comfort which was brought by it. He felt safe, like nothing else in the world mattered. Iwazumi was also enjoying it as he depended it leaving them both breathless by the end of it the kiss lasted for around five minutes when both of them had fully ran out of air. Both of them couldn't help but look into each other's eyes showing their compassion for each other. The silence then became a moment of laughter when both the males burst out laughing trying to comprehend what had just happened. Are you feeling any better now? Yes, thank you Iwa Chan. The boys continued to laugh until Iwazumi spoke up and suggested that they go home for some rest. Hey Kawa, shouldn't we go home soon? Nu, no, I wanna practice. I haven't practiced today. But Toru, your knee, you can't put too much pressure on it and I don't trust you even if you promise that you will be careful. But Iwaaaa, if you come with me, you know that I will be safe. Please see. Oikawa began to pout because he knew that it was one of Iwazumi's weaknesses and he knew he couldn't say no to him. Crap L can't say no to your puppy dog eyes. Fine. But only an hour or so okay. I don't want you to overwork yourself again. Ah. Thank you Iwa-chan. 
The two rather sexy males made their way to the gym just so Toru could practice. Oikawa was the first one to run in and grab a volleyball, he was trying to perfect his serves once again. Look I w a chan. Wasn't that one perfect? Iwazumi wasn't taking notice of what Oikawa was saying, he was too mesmerized by his beauty. Hajimi. Ha what? You wasn't listening to me. Sorry sorry, I was just amazed by your serve that's all. A we, really? Yeah, it was the best you have ever done. I w a chan, you're making me flustered. Pfttt. The two of them started to mess around by chasing each other and by throwing balls at each other's face. You can't catch me I w a chan. Oh yeah? With that being said, Hajimi caught up with Toru and ran straight at him causing to the two of them to fall on the ground crying of laughter. Ow! I w a chan that hurt. You shouldn't have said I couldn't catch you then. They both then burst out laughing once again until they noticed was position they were in. Iwazumi was on top of Oikawa, who was now blushing intensely because of the sight of his best friend and long-time crush. You okay there, Kawa? You have gone a bit red. Hmm, let's see my incredibly sexy and handsome best friend is on top of me, oh and to add to that it seems like he is getting a bit excited about it himself. So yeah, I'm great. Iwazumi looked down and noticed that he had indeed became hard because of the situation and had become more red than Oikawa. Who's the red one now? Oh shut up. Make me. Iwazumi just grinned making Oikawa fluster wondering what he was about to do next. Shouldn't have said that Toru. Before Oikawa could respond Iwazumi's lips were once again pressed against his making him fall into a trance and melt into the kiss once again, similar to the one they had shared earlier on in the day. They both began to deeper Tiga kiss hoping it would last longer, the feeling they both was feeling could only be described as a feeling if ultimate pleasure. They both had awaited a long time so they had to savior this moment. They both was ignoring the outside world and was focusing on each other, they was so focused and too engrossed in the kiss to even notice that Mackie and Matson had arrived in the gym and had took a picture of the two best friends. Now this is a picture that should be published for everyone to see. Mackie and Matson soon left before the two lovebirds could notice them. After this Iwazumi and Oikawa went home and went to bed, cuddling like they did the night before. The two fell into a silence, but it wasn't uncomfortable. If anything, it was soothing. They were both in the company of the people they loved the most, it made the atmosphere around them comfortable. The next day at practice, Oikawa was obviously the first one awake as he loved getting a couple of hours of practice in before the others came. Today, however, was slightly different. How many time have I got to tell you that you're not going to practice without me? But I w a I'm the captain. I need extra practice. Yet and I'm the vice captain. But you don't see me complaining do you? That's because you're boring. Pftt just hurry your ass up. Or else you won't get your extra practice. Giggling yes sir. They made their way to practice and once again fell in a comfortable silence while enjoying each other's company until they heard two crackheads coming their way. Aw oh geez not these two idiots. Don't stress too hard IWA, it will cause you more wrinkles. More. Hey 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 bitches bitch why the fuck you stealing Bokuto's line? What's up? Hey guys. You came early for practice too? Of course. Why wouldn't we want to see more of our precious captain? Mumbling so only Iwazumi could hear we also needed to make sure that he could still walk maybe it was because of his knee but I'm sure last night was fun. Blushing why don't we start practicing? Kawa we can practice your serves like yesterday. Oh a side of kisses to go alongside it. Did you say something Maki? Oh no. Go practice with your IWA-chan. 
alrighty. Iwezumi and Oikawa began practicing their blocks and serves when the rest of the team showed up. Once everyone was here they decided to have a three-on-three -three game in order to develop their skills. Team 1 Oikawa Iwezumi Matsun Team 2 Kunimai Kutani Matsun Kunimai Are you sure that's fair captain? I mean you and Iwezumi are the best on the team so there's no way we can win. Don't stress about it Kunimai, the idea behind this is to improve our individual skills so it doesn't matter if anyone wins or loses, besides, you have Mad Dog Chan on your side. Scoffs. Alright kind Aichi you keep the points okay? Yes sir. The first set was pretty close. Scores. Oikawa 24. Matson 23. It was now Oikawa's turn to serve and luckily it was match point in his favor. Come on Kawa, you can do it. Oikawa jumped up and did the most perfect serve that he has ever done, it swooshes past the other team's defense and even pops because of how much strength was put into it. Oh my god! Did you see that Hajime? Oikawa was ecstatic for what he had just achieved and Iwezumi was speechless. Toru, that was amazing. The two got lost in a conversation causing them to drift off from the game leading Maki and Matsun to leave and go off talking while Kunimai went off to see kind Aichi. Those two are acting weird. Tell me about it, it's strange not seeing Iwezumi call Oikawa Shidikawa. Their behave hour is rather odd. I wonder if something happened? Maybe. Maki and Matson then approached them as they heard there. Ah my friend, it's not a maybe, it is an is. Hey. Something indeed did occur between these two. Yep, it's really quite shocking. Maki showed the two of them the picture he took of Oikawa and Iwezumi kissing in THD gym the night before. Kind Aichi and Kunimai stared at it in disbelief because they could not process what was happening. You are pulling my leg, right? There's no way they would date. I'd hate to disagree with you kind Aichi but I mean, they have became closer over the last few months. Plus Iwezumi has became a lot nicer to Oikawa, so maybe they are dating. I still don't believe it, it just seems so weird. At least you guys didn't have to catch them kissing, consider yourselves lucky. I guess you're right. Oi. Lovebirds. Back to practice. Mumbling like you can talk. They all continued their practice and Oikawa's team won the match by 7 points. All those points was earned by Oikawa doing his ultimate power serve which no one can block or retrieve. Time skip, break time. Oikawa and Iwezumi had spent the full day together so far as they had the same morning classes as each other. Now, they were heading to the roof of the school when Iwezumi was suddenly dragged away by Maki and Matson. Hey what the hell do you think you? SHHHH. Hush Romeo. Iwezumi. Ugh it's you too, what do you want? Ouch, I'm deeply hurt Iwa-chan. How many times do I have to stop you from calling me that? Yes eyes we don't care. Anyways. We was wondering how long you have been dating Oikawa. Iwezumi ended up spitting his drink out when the two boys asked this. I'm sorry what? How? Long? Have? You? And? Oikawa? Been? Dating? We aren't dating. Are you sure about that? Maki pulled out his phone and showed Iwezumi the picture he had taken the night before of the two, leaving him speechless and flustered. Where did you? Doesn't matter, now answer the question. Me and Kawa aren't dating. Really? Yeah, we are just friends. Friends with benefits? Maki being iconic. Oh my god shut up Mackie. 
Okay okay but seriously, you two aren't together? That's right, we and Kawa are not dating. Well we need to fix that. I. It's painful seeing you two flirt with each other, it is obvious you like each other. Come on Iwezumi, there's no point in hiding it from us, we have already caught you making out with him. Dot dot dot. Ugh, fine. I have a crush on Oikawa okay? Finally, he admits it. So when are you gonna confess? Hmm, how about never? Not gonna work. Guys I don't even know if he even likes men, never mind if he likes me. You're dumb as fuck. Oikawa is 100% gay. Just like you too then? No, this is a bromance, it's different. Yeah yeah whatever, how can you guys even be so sure that he likes me? Well for one whenever we get changed he always looks at you and bites his bottom lip. And then he always gives you cute nicknames and gets jealous when girls flirt with you. He even ignores his fang girls now. Okay okay I get it so he might like me how am I gonna confess? Leave that to us, just make sure to ignore Oikawa for the rest of the day and be with us instead, trust me it will work out. I don't know if I trust you guys. Well you're gonna have to. Sigh. Alright. For the rest of the day Iwezumi began to ignore Oikawa and follow Maki and Matsun's advice to set up for his big confession. While this was happening, Oikawa was worried that he might have done something wrong which made Iwezumi start to ignore him. Maybe it was the kisses. Oikawa couldn't help but feel heartbroken when he couldn't spend any time with his beloved Iwa Chan. Dot. 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 It was now time for afternoon practice and Iwezumi was still ignoring Oikawa. He didn't even turn up for practice. What he did do though, was go to Oikawa's locker and placed an envelope inside with a rose attached to it. After practice Oikawa went to his locker and that specific letter fell out. He was shocked to see that someone had left him this. So without hesitation, he ripped it open and saw some instructions. Meet me at the park at 7 p.m., I have something really important to tell you. Love, I.W.A. Chan. I.W.A. Chan wrote this. Is this the reason why he has been ignoring me? Oikawa then rushed home and got dressed to meet up with I.W.A. Chan. When he got to the location he couldn't help but stare at the environment around him. Small fairy lights had been placed up with Oikawa's favorite color. Bundles of red roses could be seen all over the park and then a distinct trail of petals could be identified by him so he decided it to follow it. He was soon enough greeted with a rather shy Weijimo holding his favorite chocolates and a bundle of his favorite flowers. I.W.A. Chan? Ah. Toru. Iwaisumi seemed flustered and scared at the same time. I'm glad you came, I have something important to tell you. Oh, really? I'm all ears Hajime. Damn it, the way you say my name is sexy. Okay I don't exactly know how to start so I will get straight to the point. We have been best friends for around 10 years now Toru, and throughout those years I couldn't help but feel like something was missing. I felt like I was missing out on something that I craved. Recently, I've figured out what that thing is, it's you. I can't live without your love Toru, I just can't I really can't believe how long it took me to realize this but, I'm in love with you, and I have been for a while now I have always just been too scared to tell you how I truly felt because. I felt like it would ruin our friendship and I couldn't let that happen I cherish our friendship so much and I don't think I would be able to even live without you in my life I know this sounds selfish of me but I simply can't live without you. I love every single thing about you. I love how you put a front on and yet only show me the real you, I love how excited you get whenever we get to watch a movie, I love your strange addiction to alien movies because it makes you unique and makes me want to keep you all to myself. And most importantly, 
I love you, for you. You mean the whole world to me and it pains me when you're upset, I can't help but feel useless because I can't help you. Hajime. I love you, Toru it's okay if you don't feel the same, I understand. I just felt like it was time for you to know how I truly felt. You big dummy. Of course I feel the same way. I knew it I'm sorry for both wait. What? I love you too Hajime. I have for a while too I guess I was just as scared to tell you because I didn't want to lose our friendship either. Oh Toru. The lovers' lips met once again causing them to share a long sweet kiss, it left the both of them longing for more as their urges grew stronger, the feelings they had hidden from each other had nkw emerged as their friendship had now progressed to lovers. They craved each other's touch and would do anything in the world to achieve that sensation. Iwazumi then broke the kiss and looked straight into Oikawa's eyes while asking him a certain question. Oikawa Toru will you do me the honors of being mine? Yes. They melted into another kiss making it obvious that they both craved the feeling of love love that could only be found within each other. Finn. Bonus. Matson and Maki were currently in a bush and recorded the whole confession. I see our plan worked. Indeed, all that's left to do is share it with the others. Hanamaki forced himself into the Pretty Setters Squad group chat. Dash. What the fuck? Stop complaining bitches, I have great news. Hanamaki sent an attachment. Eh uh, fuck yes. It's about time bitch. <laughs> finally my away is ship has sailed Akashi finally getting the happiness he deserves after all his hard work to get those bitches together. Wow okay fuck me, but that was the longest video I have ever done. While I was editing it, I realized I have made so many spelling and grammar mistakes, not to mention some of the missing audio. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'm sorry for the voice change. I actually had this audio pre-done before the last test episode of Abused Akashi by Bitches I Love You All.